In this first part of the lab exercise, you're going to um, basically see how traits are inherited from parents to children. And you're going to look at several different types of traits. The first ones are going to be simple inheritance, where it's a single trait. And then further down, there's going to be um, incomplete dominance and polygenic inheritance, which involve some different types of uh, Mendelian genetics. So the first part, uh, you're basically going to be flipping a coin, and for each coin flip, one coin flip is going to be from the dad, and one coin flip is going to be from the mom, and that's going to be which gene or which allele uh, the child is inheriting uh, from that parent. So I went ahead and started my coin flips the first time around with a heads or a tails to see if we're going to have a, a baby girl or a baby boy, and I had... Um, a uh, X chromosome, which was the tails uh, flip. So we have two X's. So the father contributed an X and the mother contributed an X, and we have a baby girl. So we named her Rose. And let's look at some of these traits. Now, as you're looking at these traits, the two things to keep in mind uh, is that both parents are heterogeneous for all of these traits, which means that both parents are going to have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So when you're doing a cross, it's going to look like this. So one of the parents would be an uppercase W for the dominant allele, and then a lowercase W for the recessive allele. Uh, same thing for the mother and the father for those widow's peak. When you're doing your coin flip, if you come up heads, then that means that parent is donating a dominant allele, which is uppercase. If you flip tails, then that parent is donating a recessive allele, lowercase. So let's do this first one. This first one is a widow's peak. And for a widow's peak, it is uh, normal inheritance. So when you're looking at the Punnett square, and this is A instead of W, but it's still the same idea. Uh, if you have two heterogeneous parents, when you're doing this Punnett square, you've got four possible um, outcomes, although two of them, two genotypes, are the same. So the three genotypes that you can have is you can have uh, a dominant, a homozygous dominant, with two uppercase alleles. You can have a heterozygous offspring with an uppercase and a lowercase, represented by the green square. And then you can have a homozygous recessive individual, which is two lowercase alleles. And the frequencies there is 50% uh, for the heterozygous offspring, and then 25% for homozygous dominant, and 25% for homozygous recessive. And that's looking at the genotype, or the genetic frequency of the individual. If you look at the phenotype, then you'll notice that for a normal trait with normal dominant types of inheritance, three out of four of the children are going to show that dominant phenotype. So our example here with the widow's peak, if the uh, widow's peak being present is what is considered dominant, which it is when you look in your, type, in your lab manual, that's what it says, then three out of four is going to be the frequency of children that are going to end up having a widow's peak. Now whether they have a homozygous uh, dominant widow's peak or a heterozygous widow's peak kind of depends on which alleles they inherit from their parents. But three out of four of the children, if the parents are, homo are heterozygous, will end up having that um, dominant phenotype. So you can go to a website or you can flip a real coin, whatever you want to do. So let's see which allele the father is going to contribute. We're flipping the coin. Father contributes tails. Tails is the recessive allele. And I did the dad first. So that's going to be the lowercase w. Let's flip a coin for the mom. Mom is tails. Tails is recessive. Look at that. We got that 25%. So we have two recessive alleles, which means the baby's genotype is going to be two lowercase w's. And then the phenotype, the physical appearance, is that the widow's peak is going to be absent. And you know that based off of your lab manual, it tells you which genotypes represent which phenotypes. Let's do one more. If we're doing eyebrows, let's do the allele from the mother first. Heads. Heads is the dominant allele, so that's an uppercase B. The allele from the father. Tails. Tails is the recessive allele, so that's the lowercase b, which means the baby's genotype is going to be heterozygous, heterozygous. Sorry, autocorrect there, tried to change that to an uppercase W. And that's supposed to be two lowercase Ws. All right, so for the eyebrows, we have a heterozygous individual, which means with normal inheritance that they are going to have bushy eyebrows. 
I'm going to put absent widow's peak up here. So when you're filling out this chart, what's important to remember is that you're going to have an allele from the mom and an allele from the dad. And then you're going to have a genotype for the baby that's a combination of those alleles. And then you're going to describe the physical appearance of the baby based off of their genotype looking in your lab manual to see which one represents which thing. So for the eyebrows, the dominant genotype is to have bushy eyebrows and the recessive genotype uh, means that you have fine eyebrows. So if we had done, if we'd had two lowercase b's at that coin flip, we would have had a homozygous recessive individual, we would have had fine eyebrows. But since we had one of each kind, that's heterozygous, which means the dominant prevails, so we have bushy eyebrows. All right, let's down, go down here to number 10, because this is a different example. Uh, this is not the normal um, inheritance patterns like you have for 1 through 8, where dominant is normally dominant. On 10, we've got incomplete dominance. So if you look in your lab manual, uh, this is on page 7-5, and it talks about hair types. And there are three different options. You can have a homozygous dominant individual, uh, and that, that individual is going to have curly hair. If you have a heterozygous individual, that individual is going to have wavy hair. And if you have a homozygous recessive individual, they're going to have straight hair. So that's an example of incomplete dominance, where the heterozygous individual is in between the two homozygous extremes. All right, so let's do a coin flip and see which coin or which type of allele is going to come from the mom. So the mom contributed tails. Tails is recessive, so that's a lowercase c. Let's do a coin flip for the dad. Dad is also tails, so we have two lowercase c's, which means the baby's genotype is lowercase c, lowercase c, which is... homozygous recessive, and that means, based off of the descriptions in your lab manual, they're going to have straight hair. All right, so that's pretty simple. It's still the same type of cross. Uh, it's just that you've got a different um, appearance based off of what kind of trait they have because it's incomplete dominance. Now, number 14 is a little bit different. This is polygenic inheritance. And so hair color is a trait that's controlled by, according to your lab manual at least, and this is a little bit simplified, but four different genes, which means that each parent is going to have to flip the coin four times to determine which of these alleles are given to the child. So let's start with the mom. So mom has A, B, C, or D. So let's start with the A. The A allele is tails. So that's going to be lowercase for the B gene, tails, going to be lowercase. For the C gene, tails, so lowercase. And then for the D gene, heads. So an uppercase D for that last one. Now let's look at the dab. We're going to do the same thing. For the A gene, it's tails. For the B gene, tails. For the C gene, heads. And then for the D gene, heads. All right. So when we cross the baby's genotype, what we're going to end up with that is homozygous recessive for the A gene, homozygous recessive for the B gene, heterozygous for the C gene, and what do we have that last one? Was it was heads? Okay. And then homozygous dominant for the D gene. So this is going to be the baby's genotype based off of that four trait cross. And when you look at the Punnett square, let's just say that we had four traits here, you can see that the frequency or the probabilities of all the different outcomes um, is enormous when you've got that many traits. So there are 16 possible phenotypes or physical appearances based off of the four trait cross. And then as far as the genotypes go, there are 81 different genotypes that you can have. So you can tell that this inheritance thing can get very complex very quickly depending on how many genes are involved in controlling a trait. And in reality, most traits have more than one gene 
that somehow controls them. So it's very unlikely that there's going to be, we simplify it for the class and for the lab, but for the most part, most genes have multiple traits uh, that control them. So you can see it does get very complex. So looking over here under the hair color, let's see. So based off of the description, we've got three dominants. And so based off of that, and that means the child's going to be dark blonde according to your lab manual. So same thing with eye color. It's going to be a um, polygenic inheritance, so multiple traits, multiple alleles for the trait. So you'll do the same thing for the eye color. And then you're going to write a paragraph describing your baby's appearance. Uh, and then you're going to answer a few more questions. So in a random sample of 100 babies, how many children would you expect to have bushy eyebrows? Well, when we talked about bushy eyebrows back on page 7-3, the bushy eyebrow was the dominant um, phenotype. So when we had that cross where it was just one trait and we were looking at a normal um, cross with the, the four different squares in the Punnett square, 75% of those had that dominant um, genotype, which means that if this was bushy eyebrows, three of the four children would have bushy eyebrows. So 75% or 75 babies out of 100 would have bushy eyebrows. And that ratio is 75 bushy to 25 fine. So that's 75 to 25, or you could say that as three to one. The babies are related to each other because they're siblings. This seems like an odd question to me, but um, when we're talking about this uh, relationship of three out of four would have bushy eyebrows, that's based off of the same parents having 100 babies. And then they give you an example. If they have 100 babies with the following phenotypes, what's the ratio? So with this um, 100 babies, 72 of them is a given number. 72 have bushy eyebrows. So out of 100, that means 28 would have thin. 72 out of 100 leaves you with 28. And then when you're looking at that ratio, you're kind of doing the same thing as you did up here. So 75 um, out of 25 is three and then 25 out of 25 is one. So you can just kind of find the highest common denominator between these two numbers, which if you don't want to have a frac or don't want to have a decimal, that's pretty much four. So if you divide 72 by four, it gives you 18. If you divide 28 by four, it gives you seven. So that ratio would be 18 to seven. So 18 bushy eyebrows to seven thin eyebrows based off of the number they give you, which is 72 bushy eyebrows. But we know that overall, if you sampled 1,000 babies or 10,000 babies, 75% of them in general uh, would have that bushy eyebrow trait because that's a dominant um, genotype.